The following program is rated GE. It is suitable for general family viewing. When a buyer finally finds their dream home after months of searching, the next step is to find the right furniture for the space. We sat down with Samia Sher, the CEO and founder of Sofia Furniture, to know what factors people should consider to get the right furniture for their living space. My name is Samir Shah and I am um, CEO and founder of Sofia Furniture Store. We deal in all sorts of uh, furniture for the home and office, so your living room, bedroom, dining, outdoor furniture and uh, as well as office. What types of furniture exist in the market? So it really depends first on which room you want to uh, furnish. When you go to the living room, there's different types of sofas, such as stationary sofas, recliners, L-shaped sofas, ETC. And then you go into materials. Um, we go into configurations with more than three seater, with a two seater, and a one seater, making a six seater. Um, then there's things like the coffee tables, TV cabinets. Um, so everything comes together uh, depending on what you want. Um, in some bigger houses, you have a living room where you only have your guests coming in, more like your reception kind of place where you entertain. Uh, and then you have a separate room for your TV room, for your family room. Uh, some houses, uh, they can't afford that. So you only have one room, which is a living room, which is a family room and your TV room. So, yeah, it all, it all depends on, on what room you're furnishing. We know every living room has its own decorating challenges. Are you aiming for a cozy living room your family can enjoy? Is your small living room too cozy to accommodate your big ideas? Maybe you want to highlight some incredible windows with a view. Or you have a tricky fireplace or French doors to work around. Meeting all your criteria can be stressful without a plan. No doubt. So, how can one furnish a small living room space? So I always tell people first look at the, the, the plan of how to do Look at where the windows are so that you know where the natural light is coming in. Uh, if it's a typical house, uh, a typical house in Nairobi, Kenya, and you are looking at the TV being placed, sometimes it will be placed opposite the, the window on the other side. Some people don't like that because they're like, no, I don't want to put my TV. So it, it really depends on the individual as well, uh, how you how you place things, also where the doors are coming into the living room. and. Uh, if it's a small living room, then you have to look at sometimes uh, storage and space saving things. So you have sometimes clients asking for, can this bed turn, I mean, can this sofa turn into a bed? So is it a sofa bed? Um, they will not go for seven seater sofas. Uh, they want to take things like recliners because they feel there's a multifunctionality to it. Somebody feels that they're paying a certain amount of money. I want to milk that money 100 percent so i need to make sure it has cup holders it has extra storage it can recline you know uh so it can turn into a, into a bed um so yeah it all depends again also on the size of the family and what about the bedroom again uh space is, is always an issue and these days i tell people our new apartments, I think, are being built more uh, smaller and cozier. So, again, um, typically you would have people doing uh, the bed uh, with the head, the head would right against the wall. You have your two tight stands. 
uh, everyone wants to go for king size or some kind of food or even fit or that king size into that space so you can see them going for a queen size so this is where also customization also helps when you're, when you're buying if you're buying from someone who actually has those options um, sometimes you don't want to have two nightstands maybe you want to put one on one side and then take the other nightstand and fit it in another place i've seen interior designers doing that as well uh, or just slash the two nightstands from 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 there with some simple spools with a dresser uh, on the other side with a mirror uh, people also want uh, things that are foldable things that are you have sliding mirrors on uh, the dressers these days where you have storage at the back it's all about again going back to the same thing is how much space do you have do i have multifunctional uh, furniture that has storage solutions uh, you have beds that open up you have extra storage they have the ones with the trundle um, so yeah okay. so arts and plants i would put under interior uh, decorating these things are all put there to, to personalize your space to embellish your space with what your touch yeah if some guys don't like nice. some, some guys no, like art. Uh, some people like glass vases, some people like uh, natural clay uh, type of pots. So it all depends on what somebody wants to do with it. But generally speaking, these things are to personalize the space, to embellish the space, to make it a little bit more homely and, and, and to, to, to fill it up, so to speak, with your touch. No one actually thought too much about the balconies until COVID happened, right? So. People didn't have places to go out to, so they had to make their own outdoor space. So it's interesting what you see people have, have the trends in artificial grass have um, uh, really uh, picked up. A lot more people are buying artificial grass because we have balconies yes. and uh, concrete jungles where we're trying to make our place as natural as possible. So I've seen a lot of people uh, getting grass, uh, artificial grass, putting it down, artificial plants as well, because People are living busy lifestyles. They don't have time to look after plants as well. Uh, so they put these things, uh, swings, that have been very common in balconies. And then you have your, your, your basic two-seater with a, the center uh, table. Now, let's look at the dining area. How can one set it up to look more appealing? So a nice thing that most people don't have noticed they want to do, but now I think the trend is picking up a bit, is having your buffet and hutch so you have a side table next to the dining where you put your you lay your, your plates you put the serving bowls uh, all the things that need to be served the glasses glass of water some people have your dispenser it's over there um so again <clears throat> it all depends on how somebody is coming into the room where we're serving from where's the kitchen where's somebody coming in putting the food where your guests are going to come in from, um, how many seats are there? I'm going to put a, a, a carpet underneath it. Then you start thinking about kids uh, spilling food down on that uh, carpet. Um, so I guess it's uh, again go back to my key thing: the size. So they're different. They say different strokes for different folks. We'll be right back after this break.
Welcome back. Now, your living room sees more food traffic than any other space in your home. Whether you're reclining on a sectional sofa to watch TV or entertaining guests, the way you use this space constantly means it not only needs to look great but also work hard. To curate a living room that lasts, your design focus should be functional, stylish and quality. As trends come and go, it is important to create a living room that prioritizes your comfort and aesthetics. Now, let's look at some of the current trends in the market. So the trends, funny enough, haven't... Uh... I think Kenyans, we have a very traditional sense of style when it comes to our homes. And it is based on our growing up influence. So we have a set of people who uh, largely, uh, we consume a lot of media. Our media comes from the West, so we're talking about America. So you notice this is also where the trends of recliners, American style sofas comes into play. So a very traditional, uh, looking uh, sofas, recliners also. Recliners never go out of trend. With the rise of social media, however, Samir says that people's eyes have opened up and they're now leaning towards European-style furniture. So you have the traditional guys, like the decliners or anything, but even them, you know, is the thing we, we've noticed with, uh, so I, mean, I don't know if it's a human thing or it's a thing, but I go to my neighbor's house or my friend's house, I see that couch, I'm like, in, 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 in. looks really nice. Also, uh, actually getting to uh, experience it and see and they're exposed to it. Does the type of house determine the type of furniture one has? Yeah. Yes. Again, it is still good at the uh, space. Mm. One bedroom, two bedroom. If it's like a bed sitter, uh, somebody would want to have it. They said the sofa bed. <laughs> they can't have space for a six seater. So they opt for just taking a three seater, which has a sofa bed in it. There's also a trend that was happening in the States way back when was the pull-out uh, type of bed. Yeah, so it'd be a sofa first, then after when it's time to go to sleep, just easily push the sofa to one side or fold the sofa to one side and pull down the uh, bed.
When it comes to styling older properties, the furnishing acts as a distraction from any potential flaws that are likely to be seen. If there is no furniture or furnishings to distract the eye, the crack near the architrave or the old window frames becomes glaringly obvious. Likewise, Outdated furniture will make the whole property appear old-fashioned. By simply replacing a worn-out sofa with a clean, modern one, or adding some bright scatter cushions, you can instantly reinvigorate the room. Even the oldest house on the block can appear fresh and contemporary with the right furnishing. Well, it's Kariburi Soft Life. That's what I always tell people. That's our slogan. So come on down. We have something for everyone at the Waterfront Mall in Karen. You can reach us on 0769169193 on WhatsApp or call. Also on our social media handle pages as Instagram, TikTok, Facebook. Well, that's it for today's episode. Catch us again next Tuesday, same time, same place.